Welcome. Thank you for joining us today to remember and honor Sergeant Joe Bergeron and his sacrifice and legacy. It's hard to imagine that it has been 14 years since we lost him. Personally, Joe is a friend, a supervisor, and a mentor. I'll never forget walking in the night entrance for my shift, as I did many times, and seeing Joe sitting at the sergeant's desk, waiting to greet whoever walked in the door with a big smile and a hello. This was Joe. He was always friendly, willing to give guidance, and put others before himself. You could tell Joe genuinely loved being a police officer and helping others. If you knew Joe, you also knew his wife, Gail, and daughters, Sam and Allie, meant the world to him. Sergeant Joe Bergeron was an all-around great guy. On May 1st, 2010, Sergeant Joe Bergeron made the ultimate sacrifice. Steadfast, Joe responded to a call to help others. He didn't hesitate, he just went. Being a police officer takes courage. Joe demonstrated that on this day and all of his days. If you have ever been to Washington, D.C. and have had the honor to visit the National Law Enforcement Officers Memorial, you've likely seen the lion statues. These statues symbolize the protective role of our law enforcement officers and convey the strength, courage, and valor that are the hallmarks of those who serve and those who have made the ultimate sacrifice. One of those statues, close to where Sergeant Joe Bergeron's name is engraved on the wall, Proverbs 28.1 is etched into stone and reads, the wicked flee when no man pursueth, but the righteous are bold as a lion. Chief Beardeman is unfortunately out of the state at a conference, so he asked me to read a few words from him. It is with a heavy heart that I address you today, albeit from a distance, as we gather to pay tribute to Sergeant Joe Bergeron, a fallen hero. Though I cannot be present in person, my thoughts and prayers are with each and every one of you as we honor the memory of a man who made the ultimate sacrifice in service to this community. 14 years ago, Sergeant Bergeron bravely donned his uniform and badge and set off to work. Knowing Joe as I did, I know that the badge meant that every day he was given the opportunity to make a difference in someone's life, to offer hope, times of despair, and to bring justice to those who seek it. This embodies the values of dedication and selfishness and defines our law enforcement profession and agency. Joe's legacy lives on in every new officer I hire, as these are the qualities I uphold as our standards. Today, we are honored to have one of my mentors, retired Maplewood Police Chief Dave Tamala, with us. He served as our chief during Sergeant Bergeron's tragic passing. His profound compassion and leadership got our agency through its darkest moment. Chief Tamala will deliver the keynote speech, offering insight and reflection on Sergeant Bergeron's life and service. Though we mourn Joe's passing, let us also draw strength from Sergeant Bergeron's example. Let us honor his memory by continuing to uphold the values for which he gave his life. And let us never forget the sacrifice he made for this community, a sacrifice that will be forever remembered and honored. To Sergeant Joe Bergeron, I offer my deepest gratitude and respect. You have taught this chief humility, honor, compassion, and most importantly, humor. 
May your legacy live on in the hearts of those you touched, and may your spirit continue to inspire us all. I miss you, Sarge, Chief Beardman. At this time, I'd like to introduce some of our honored guests, the Bergeron family, including Gail, Sam, and Allie. Our guest speakers include Maplewood Mayor Mary Lee Abrams, Lawn Standing City Council Member Kathleen Juneman, Ramsey County Chaplain Bob Leo, and retired Maplewood Chief of Police Dave Tamala. I would also like to recognize our Assistant City Manager Mike Darrow, our former City Manager Linda Coleman, and our City and Public Safety staff who are in attendance. I also see that Council Member Rebecca Cave is in attendance. Thank you. Our first speaker will be Mayor Mary Lee Abrams. Good morning, everyone. We come together today on the 14th anniversary of Sergeant Joe Bergeron's death to honor him and to remember his legacy. He is included in the 270 Minnesota peace officers from 116 departments who have given their lives in the protection of their communities. I had the privilege of knowing Joe long before I served in the council and as mayor. I knew him to be a man who loved his wife Gail and his daughters, and he spoke frequently about them. I knew him to be a man who cared for the welfare of his fellow police officers and someone who truly cared about the community and the residents of Maplewood that he was sworn to protect and to serve. We gather today on the anniversary of his death to remember him and to honor his sacrifice to us all. And for that, we will be eternally grateful. He made our community a much better place to live. To his wife, Gail, and his daughters, Sam and Allie, the friends gathered here and his extended family, to all of the public safety officers and other Maplewood staff, we acknowledge your sacrifice and all the lost time that you didn't have with Joe. And for that, we are indebted to you. Thank you, Mayor. Next speaking, we have City Council Member Kathleen Juneman. How can it be 14 years? Like Mary Lee, I knew Joe long before I was on the City Council. And every time I came into City Hall, if he was anywhere around, you knew it because his spirit was there. And he, he would always smile and say hi. And sometimes there would be a sarcastic remark exchanged because we both loved the art of sarcasm. What I remember most about him, I think, it's hard to narrow it down, is his dedication to his job after his dedication to his family. I never ran into him when he didn't say something about the queen and the two princesses. I think that's one of the things he would really like about the new mission of our public safety department is being family first and family friendly. He would really, really like that, I think. I also remember how dedicated he was to trying to solve problems that other people just couldn't quite seem to even understand, much less solve. I think the ultimate proof of that was when he started helping with um, code enforcement, and he would go to these difficult places, and he could turn people around like that. They knew he cared, and so even though they were in trouble, he could help maybe fix it or at least see, help them see their way to fix it. Joe was an incredible person. I am privileged to have known him, and I think his legacy is threefold. It's a legacy of justice, a legacy of compassion, and certainly a legacy of humor. Thank you, Council Member Juneman. Next speaking is Ramsey County Chaplain Bob Leo. Thank you. I am very honored and privileged to be here again for the 14th time. And uh, I know a lot of, I recognize a lot of faces and I'm sure you recognize mine. I uh, wanna thank you all for coming and, and for all of those who are responsible for putting this together. And I'd like to speak about Joe is my friend and my boss. It was a great honor to know Joe. And today we remember Joe for his unf unselfishness, 
his wonderful sacrifices unto his own life. And Joe, your memory will never be forgotten. We thank you, Joe, for what you've done for us, your city, your family, and the law enforcement profession. I ask you to join me in a little prayer for Joe. Heavenly Father, we ask you to look down upon us and hear our prayer. Bestow on us your blessings. Keep us strong in our faith and under your infinite power and protection. I ask you to bless our friend and fellow officer, Joe, and bless his wonderful family and all his friends this day. And let your dazzling radiance shine upon him and keep him in your saving light for the darkness is no more. In your blessed name, O oh Lord, we pray, now and forever, amen. And I think Joe would like to uh, probably ask and appreciate the fact that we keep all of the officers in, uh, who died in the line of duty and all first responders as well. Amen. Thank you, Bob. We created the Sergeant Joe Bergeron Community Service Award in keeping with Joe's spirit of service. This award was created in collaboration with the Bergeron family to honor his legacy through the community service he provided throughout his career. The Bergeron family assists in reviewing the yearly award nominations. This award further gives us the opportunity to recognize those in our community whose actions exemplify selfless community service. This award is given annually and reserved for a Maplewood public safety member and a community member. This award may be given to a person who has contributed significantly to community policing and service to the community. The Sergeant Joe Bergeron Community Service Award in plaque is hung proudly in City Hall. And the award recipient's names are added to the plaque. This year's Sergeant Joe Bergeron Community Service Award recipients are Detective Ashley Bergeron and embedded social worker, Dean Miller. I would like to welcome Ashley and Dean to accept their awards. Lieutenant Michael Dugas will read the awards. Thank you, it's an honor to be able to present this award in the memory of Joe Bergeron, who I worked for and with for many years. To begin, Detective Ashley Bergeron. It is with great pleasure we award Detective Ashley Bergeron with the 2024 Joe Bergeron Community Service Award. Detective Bergeron started her policing career with the Maple Police Department in 2017. In 2021, she was selected for our sworn community outreach coordinator position where she worked with public safety staff, the city, and the community to create meaningful community events. The event she created helped build important relationships within the community. In 2022, she was promoted to the position of detective where she currently focuses on family violence and sexual assault investigations. Detective Bergeron carried over from her community outreach coordinator position her passion and drive for helping others and positively impacting our community. It is obvious that Detective Bergeron cares deeply about getting justice for victims and holding violent offenders accountable. Although no longer in community outreach coordinator position, she still participates in a large number of community outreach events, continuing to build important relationships. In the nomination written for Detective Bergeron, it states, Detective Bergeron has played a vital role in the investigations team and is a trusted officer and partner. Over her career, Detective Bergeron has worked closely with the Maplewood community. I have personally seen her at community outreach events such as bingo, trunk or treat, and other community-based events. Detective Bergeron always takes time out of her day to ensure that these events succeed and excel when given a chance to expand them. In particular, she coordinated a Jurassic Park dinosaur-themed police car experience for the Halloween trunk or treat, which was voted by the community as the favorite decorated vehicle. 
Detective Bergeron has participated in and led multiple Citizen Police Academy presentations regarding patrol and investigations. And she is continuously looking for ways to make the community better and outreach events more successful. So for everything you do, thank you and congratulations. Next, we have Dean Miller. It is with great pleasure I announce that embedded social worker Dean Miller has been selected to receive the Joe Bergeron Community Service Award. Dean came to the Maplewood Public Safety Department three years ago. In that time, his passion for helping others has done a great service to the community. Dean has not only taken on the traditional follow-up and co-response roles, but has successfully engaged our unsheltered population and transitioned many of them into stable housing. Additionally, he has helped tackle the reasons behind them being unsheltered. Dean was nominated for this award by School Resource Officer Emily Burt McGregor, who he works with closely on the mental health outreach team, and I think her nomination says it perfectly. She said, I am nominating Dean because even though it is his job to be a service to the community, I believe he embodies many of the characteristics that community servants strive for. He is incredibly empathetic and able to put himself in anyone's shoes, which enables him to forge connections with individuals with whom he has little in common. He's compassionate and keeps showing up for people, even those struggling to accept help or believe they aren't worthy. Dean is hardworking and perseverant, an invaluable trait when working with homeless and indigent populations who may move around a lot. And finally, I know Dean really cares about the community of Ramsey County as a whole, and specifically Maplewood. I have been able to see the positive change he's made in many residents' lives and continues to do so through his work daily. When I think of someone who lives the values and works really hard in service of the community, I think of Dean. Please join me in thanking these deserving recipients for their dedication to serving the Maplewood community one more time. We look forward to honoring Sergeant Joe Bergeron's legacy through this important award in future years. Next, I'd like to introduce our keynote speaker, retired Maplewood Chief of Police, Dave Tamala. Thank you, Lieutenant. Good morning, everybody. And for those of you in this room, I just want to point out that the lobby is filled with people, mostly current uniforms, that cops always sit in the back of the room when it comes to training. So I, I think they all thought that maybe there was going to be some instruction here today. But uh, for those of you who I have not met, uh, my name is Dave Tamala. I was the chief of police here in Maplewood from 2002 to 2012. Um, those of you who thought you'd never have to listen to me again, I apologize for that, but <laughs> Chief Beardeman reached out to me and asked me to fill in for him today as he's out of town, and I was honored to accept that invitation. To my fellow retired law enforcement officers, thank you for your years of dedication to the noble profession of policing. I wish you all very long and happy and healthy retirements. It is an understatement to say you deserve it. To those of you currently serving as public safety officers, everyone here is grateful for your dedication, professionalism, and service. It goes without saying, police has gotten much more difficult in the past several years. Thank you all for sacrificing time away from your families and working hours Many here would never even dream of working to keep us and our community safe. I'd also like to recognize two people that have been here just about every year, if not every year, since Joe died. Um, kind of the unsung heroes that we don't recognize here. First of all, Bill Langevin, seated back there. Bill is a retired St. Paul firefighter and an avid marathoner, and I gotta add, he is training for the Boston Marathon this year. And uh, 
It's gotten interrupted a little bit, I know, Bill, thanks. Um, he happened to be running on the Vento Trail the morning of May 1st, 2010. He was able to provide important information related to Joe's murderers, which proved to be invaluable to the investigation and trial that followed. He was also the last person to see Joe alive. The second person is retired St. Paul officer Dave Longman. And he's since grown a beard and is kind of disguised back there. Um, but he risked his own life to put an end to the insanity that took place on May 1st, 2010. Thank you for not hesitating to thrust yourself into a near fatal situation. Congratulations on your well-deserved retirement. Thank you both for being here once again and your unselfish involvement back in 2010. Most of you have been to this memorial for the past 13 years. We've heard about the many great things Joe was part of during his career and life. Not to minimize Joe's career and accomplishments or to be disrespectful, I tried to take a little different approach through my comments today. With Gail's permission, I'll attempt to do that. I find myself thinking about what Joe's life would have been like for the past 14 years. He probably would have been retired for nearly 13 years now. Because of his retirement at a young age, he probably would have continued working. Gail is confident he'd be working in a junkyard somewhere. <laughs> Her worst fear is the junkyard would be in their backyard. <laughs> Gail has developed a love for travel. Joe hated to travel. Even though Joe ha would have extra time on his hands, Gail would probably still be traveling without him. Joe would probably still be quite active in his other hobbies, like four-wheeling, hunting, and his infamous carp fishing expeditions. And some of you know that joke, uh, that some of us accompany him on after getting off of an afternoon shift. He was famous for making these dough balls out of oatmeal that carp love for some reason. And we would go over on Arcade Street uh, where the bridge passes over into Coleman Lake and catch carp in the middle of the night. And some of them might have ended up on the roadway for people to find the next morning. Um, we had nothing to do with that. <laughs> then there are the girls. <clears throat> Sam and Al have doubled in age since Joe was killed. I'm sure Joe had spent plenty of time bragging about their accomplishments. I remember listening to their dreams for their futures 14 years ago, and now those dreams have evolved successfully, come to fruition. Al has become an exceptional chef. It would, if you would like to taste her creations, you don't have to travel to a restaurant. She has developed a business where she will come to your home and prepare outstanding meals for you. So see her afterwards and uh, <laughs> we'll uh, boost the business here. Sam has followed in Joe's footsteps as a police officer and like Joe, has become a scumbag magnet. I, I can use that term publicly now because no one will scrutinize that. If anyone meets this description in this room, stay out of Lionel Lakes. <laughs> Queen, Gail, and the girls remain close and spend a great deal of time together. I know your dad was and would continue to be incredibly proud of the talented women, women you have become. Joe, unfortunately, has and will continue to miss big events in his family's life. <clears throat> like high school graduations, college graduations, potential weddings, and no pressure here, girls, but grandchildren. The best part of his life was still ahead of him after 2010. The weather outside today um, is what it is. May 1st, 2010 started out as a beautiful day weather-wise. 
However, the events of that day have become events we wish never would have happened. Joe, we all miss you and wish you were still here with us today. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. In conclusion, may you leave here today in peace, knowing that Sergeant Joe Bergeron's legacy lives on. As you go about your day, please take some time to reflect on Joe and how he lived his life. Please keep the Bergeron family and all police officers and first responders in your thoughts and prayers. The bagpipers will lead us out of the council chambers and to the memorial outside City Hall. They will be followed by the Honor Guard, the Bergeron family, police officers, and the remaining attendees. Once at the memorial, the Honor Guard will lay a wreath to conclude the service. Please join us in the PD garage for refreshments following the service. Thank you for your valued attendance.